This video is brought to you by Extreme Tees. If you like what you see, click on the link below this video and put Kevin in the promo code and you'll get yourself a 20% discount. Real quick before we get into the video, just want to put this out there. If any of you out there can do it, and if you if it's on your heart, I'd like you to become a part of my $2 a month club. Now that's not a lot. However, I definitely don't want to make people feel like they're obligated to be a part of that. All it entails is simply $2 a month. All you got to do is click on the link below this video, which is my PayPal. And if you decide you want to be a part of my $2 a month club, just send $2 to my PayPal. So remember, you are not obligated, but if you can, that would be greatly appreciated. It's a new year, but not much has changed. Houses are selling in a week. Interest rates are zero. And our government is still borrowing money. Oops, my bad. Sorry about that printing money. Five trillion dollars in money to be exact. Let me, what could possibly go wrong with that? And meanwhile, consumer confidence done hit a 10 year low and inflation hit 6.8% with parts of America seeing rates as high as 8%. So that means something's not adding up, is it? So question is, what can you do? Putting your assets in precious metals will keep your money away from the volatility of the markets and inflation and let you sleep good at night. So this month, Noble Gold is giving away a free one tenth ounce solid gold American Eagle coin with any qualifying plan that you start. So talk to an expert at Noble Gold and they'll run you through the options for keeping your money safe. No pressure, no hassle, and no call center. It's just a chance to speak to someone who knows what they're talking about for once. And how refreshing would that be? All you got to do is call us at 877-646-5347 or visit our website at noblegoldinvestments.com. That is noblegoldinvestments.com. Now let's get to this video. I think it's about time for me to put this J6 narrative to bed. What's going on, man? America? This is Kevin from Kevin's Corner where I try to make sense out of nonsense. And y'all... We already knew it was coming. The whole hysteria over January 6th and and what the Democrats are now trying to portray to be the next major historical event in our country that we now have to put on the calendar every year. You know, having moments of silence and solidarity and all of that stuff. Um, so I want to go ahead and investigate this thoroughly so that this way, after I get done showing y'all some alternative viewpoints of this, um, maybe we can put this narrative to bed. In fact, I will go so far as to say, uh, if you have some friends out there, they're sitting back talking about some man, I can't believe you supported Trump. He supported an insurrection and, and a, a coup and, and all of that stuff. I'm going to make a couple of videos that I think would be very helpful for them. That is if, that is if they haven't been 100% brainwashed and co-opted uh, by the left in their narratives. But if they got one smidge of common sense left, then there's no way they can still support that narrative after I get done. So let's start off first of all, by checking out Chameleon Kamala Harris, our fearless slash incompetent uh, vice president and how she, you know, approached nine, I mean, I'm sorry, how she approached January 6th and so on and so forth. And then we're going to hear from a brother. See, I ain't going to start off with no white dude because then you know how it is already, man. You know, all of the folks better. Well, I mean, he's a white guy and he can't say anything about it because she's a black girl. She's a woman. And, and, and white people can't say anything about black people in Congress or in the government if they're black and if they're a woman. So I found some commentary from a brother. So let's see what he got to say about it. Y'all ready? Certain dates echo throughout history. Oh, okay. December 7th, 1941. Okay. September 11th, 2001. Oh, okay, okay. And January 6th, 2021. What? For Kamala Harris to sit up there, oh, Pearl Harbor, 9-11. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm speechless too. What day? 3,000 people died on September 11th. Yeah. 2,300 people died Pearl Harbor. <laughs> One person died on January the 1, or January 6th. Ashley Babbitt, right? Ashley Babbitt. Yeah, yeah, Trump supporter. And this idiot, who's only there to be a racial prop. Ooh. Unqualified, there to be a racial prop mm. to keep the racial division going, mm. is analogizing January the 6th to Pearl Harbor 
and 9-11. Now, my man Jason took the kid gloves off immediately. He didn't even come out with no, you know, warm-up jabs and stuff. That dude came out swinging like Bolo off of uh, Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee. Bolo. I mean, he came out like Mr. T, Clever Lane. So, this woman who, for whatever reason, done came out before Joe Biden and started speaking about this, um, made some drastic comparisons, which the left always does. They make these comparisons because um, they don't really have policies to run on, so they find these these very uh, trumped up, drummed up uh, situations, oftentimes concoctioned by them with the support of the media, and then they make it appear that this stuff is so large, so big, so grandiose that it now has to be on a level where we memorialize it in everything. And you know what that has a tendency to do to folks that have no understanding of that smooth Jedi mind trick, that magic trick, that redirection. Uh, it has a tendency to make a lot of folks forget that they're stinking it up right about now. Uh, it makes people forget that their policies suck. It makes people forget that um, they have caused lives throughout their whole, uh, this current administration in regards to our soldiers. Uh, they've caused lives in regards to them not condemning all of those riots over the summer where folks were killed. And I'm not talking about Trump supporters. I'm talking about regular citizens were killed, including, including some of those precious black people. See, these type of over the top exaggerations of things that happened, um, they have a tendency to only affect those that are susceptible to those Jedi mind tricks, but not us and not Jason. See, so Jason not only calls that out because it's a crazy comparison, but then he goes a little further by making sure everyone understands any black conservative that knows how identity politics works, knows how the Democrat Party operates, knows that she is unqualified and the only reason she's even in that position is to try to keep the black population in check to try to use that racial narrative to try to bond with the sister girls and the brothers and all of that stuff um and keep that racial tension going that is the only reason because when you look at it she has done absolutely nothing not only nothing for america but definitely nothing for black people but hurt them going back to her days in California. So yes, he comes out swinging. Oh snap. But Hey, I ain't mad at him. We're trying to get to the bottom of this and see if these comparisons are equivalent to all of these real drastic historical moments. Here we go. And doing it with a straight face. Oh. When have we ever seen vice presidents out talking as much as we keep seeing Kamala Harris Good front point. and center yeah. and no one in the corporate media calling this BS out. What, what vice president is Jason. giving speeches as often as she is right before the president as if we got two different presidents. <laughs> we got the 20% black president and we got the 80 year old senile president. This is a game. They love. Oh, Jason, God, man, d d settle down, bro. No, don't settle down. Um, in fact, why don't you kick it up a notch? So he hit it right off the grip, man. First of all, why are we hearing from her? Why is she even making a speech? Could it be because creepy, sleepy, sleazy, slimy, sloppy Joe, um, he can't really make a good speech without pff, going off uh, on some tangent, uh, coming across insincere as if she was sincere. I mean, but at least she can read the teleprompter. And um, it appears to me that they are aware then most people now uh, can conclude that Joe Biden has something going on mentally. Um, and so what they're now doing, it appears, is to stick her out there. But especially when it has something to do with uh, an occurrence that they can push the racial narrative of white supremacy and white nationalism. Notice they don't stick her out there to address um, all of those illegal immigrants that's coming. Um, they don't stick her out there to address... Um, all of those black folks up in New York and other areas across the country that uh, are in Democrat ran cities where they're making them show their you know what. And it's coming across as modern day medical segregation again because they can't even get into those places. They don't bring her out to talk about that. They don't bring her out to talk about the failing economy, anything like that. They, they don't want her to come out. But boy, when it comes down to something that they can racialize, send in the clown 
and there she goes. And then he calls her 20% black. <laughs> and of course, I see now President Jason Tis Tis. Tis, tis, but don't stop. January 6th, where, oh, I remember exactly where I was. This is a game. They is, love. Oh. You remember where you were on March 1, 1971, hmm. when the Weather Underground oh. bombed the Capitol? Oh. Anybody remember where they were? This ain't the first time. There have been worse attacks on the Capitol. And yes, the Weather Underground in 1971 bombed the Capitol. Wow. No one was hurt, but they did set off a bomb at the Capitol. Mm -hmm. In 1983, okay. the Capitol, what a bunch of liberal white women calling themselves M19 uh -oh. bombed the Capitol. Oh. You remember where you were? Oh, huh. this is the worst attack on the Capitol. They came in with flagpoles and moose heads oh. and, and guys dropped dead of an overdose out in the parking lot. Oh. And we found a gun on a couple of people. Oh. They didn't pull him and shoot anybody. The only person that pulled and shot a gun was Michael Byrd, and he killed a little white woman, Ashley Babbitt. Oh. This is the worst thing in the world. And, oh, our democracy was on the brink, and if they had just gotten in, if the Capitol Police hadn't stopped them. What? What would happen? They were going to take Nancy Pelosi hostage. With a what? group of idiots. Were that's all it's going to take to overthrow this government. <laughs> and to overthrow democracy. Now, what that sounds like to me, guys, is that uh, my man here is just making simple common sense. And anyone who can't figure that out has none. You, you're lacking common sense. If you bought into the narrative that a group of ragtag uh, protesters who've pretty much got baited into going into that capital had the, uh, the ability, the coordination, the, the, the power, the resources, to take over the Capitol and to attack people in Congress with no weapons, nothing but cell phones and, and MAGA hats, then you're a little confused. You're a little special. Um, things don't work like that. Remember Joe Biden said that to overthrow the government, you're going to need more than AR-15s. You're going to need jets and all that, that stuff. But for some reason, these Democrats are pretending that a couple MAGA hats and a couple cell phones would do it. What were they going to do after they seized the Capitol? How were they going to keep it? Hmm? If you really think after watching the next couple videos I'm about to drop on y'all and seeing some footage that probably you've never seen before and probably won't see, um, then and you find you conclude after seeing those that, yeah, it was an insurrection and we need to memorialize this, then you are special. And I don't mean that in a good way. So let's finish here. My man right here, Jason, finish us off for our first episode of putting J6 to bed. Is a group of idiots wear, uh, waving flagpoles yeah. to come into the building. And um, our democracy, yeah. this country, is on such thin ice yeah, that right. all it takes is a, a handful of rednecks to walk into the Capitol and the whole thing falls apart. <laughs> yeah. See, see, that's where you bring it down to the level where you go, oh yeah, now that you, you, you know, man, put it like that, it does sound a little crazy. Well, of course it sounds crazy. And the only reason it doesn't sound crazy to some is because when you listen to a entity, organization that you assume doesn't have some type of hidden agenda and is not diabolical, cynical, and evil to whereas they would try to politicize something like that and knowing that it is nowhere near equal to 9-11, Pearl Harbor. Um, you just can't fathom that they would do something like that. So the brain tries to make sense of it and say, well, obviously, these are news outlets. These are supposed to be politicians. Why would they make that up? Well, what politician do you know, especially on the Democrat side, <laughs> that uh, don't use things for their political gain? who don't exaggerate things, who don't embellish. I mean, heck, Joe Biden said that the fact that black people have to show IDs in 2021, that was equivalent to Jim Crow, but not just Jim Crow. It was Jim Crow on steroids. And it was like, uh, you know, Jim Crow on steroids, all of that stuff. You don't think that was an exaggeration? Heck, Mad Maxine, just a couple months ago, said that the Border Patrol in Dallas, Texas, or somewhere in Texas, that was stopping those Haitians coming across our border was whipping them and not just whipping them, but that was worse than slavery. Now, if you dumb enough to believe that, 
And if you can't see what they're doing with this, then you deserve to be manipulated. But for them to get up there and try to say that this J6 was equivalent to January, I mean, to 9-11, Pearl Harbor, only way they can get away with this garbage is that society buys into it. But you won't find me getting up there kneeling in a, a moment of silence. You won't find me up there bringing reefs up there and dropping them down. You won't find me doing that. I'm not going to play into this garbage. This is what they want. They want us and other citizens to play into this garbage and keep it going, not because of the lives lost, because the only one was lost was Ashley Babbitt, not because of those brave cops who they never support anyway, not because of all of that stuff. It's simply because they need a narrative to continue going on and on and on that Trump's dangerous, he's responsible for this, and everybody who voted or supported him is equally responsible for, oh, and by the way, they're all white nationalists too. So that gives us the right to do whatever we got to do to them. And that's why we have to expose this. And that's why I'm trying to put J6 to bed once and for all. For any of those out there that got an ear to hear, okay, send them this video. God bless y'all. We see y'all in my next video to expose J6 and to put this mess to bed. Now, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video. Um, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Rumble. If you want to be a part of my $2 a month club, feel free. Links are below. My cash app and my PayPal is all down there. And it kind of offsets all of the extra stuff that goes on with my channel and stuff like that. Share my video. Make sure you um, are still subscribed and also Make sure your notifications are set to all. And don't forget to check out Extreme Tees, my sponsor. If you like their products, click on the link below this video. Put Kevin in the promo code. You'll get a 20% discount. All right. God bless y'all. And we see y'all on part two of putting J6 to bed. God bless you.